So what I've drawn right here is a simple electrocardiograph wave. So I just like to call this a little bit of ECG. And looking at a diagram from your textbook, whatever textbook you have, let's name the parts first. So we see these waveforms. And what do we have? First, look at a diagram from your textbook. We have what? The P wave. Then what? We have what's called the QRS waveform or complex. People just name this the QRS wave very often or the, the QRS. And then the T wave over here. These are the parts of a typical ECG. Now I want you to notice, I said ECG, didn't I? ECG. Oftentimes you hear people say what? EKG using the old German spelling of cardiac. That's actually out here in the 21st century. ECG is the correct way to say it now. But you'll find people a little bit more ancient like myself who will still say EKG, but ECG is better. Composed of three peaks, the P wave, the QRS, and the T wave. And each one of these represents something. But you've, you've seen these done right on someone maybe you've had it done on yourself i've had a lot of ecgs over the years we stick electrical leads on a person in my lab i've got a simple three lead ecg we've got little clothes pin leads and wires that come off of it and we hook it up you know to the little box then you can see the little waveform, right? It is like that. Bad picture, sorry. You can have eight leads, 12 leads, different numbers of leads on a person. This is a passive electrical recording. Meaning you don't have to poke a hole in anybody to get this. The worst you have to do is what? Use that stuff that's sort of like sandpaper, maybe shave off a little chest hair and scrape the skin. Yeah, I've had that done a bunch of times to get a good lead on, a good connection. But you don't have to zap anybody with anything. You don't have to cut them open. You don't have to do anything except hook up a couple of electrodes to them. And you can get this recording. But look at the first letter in what this is. Electro. It is very important that you understand this is an electrical recording of what the heart does. It's a passive electrical recording. So I can describe what happens at these three waveforms, the P, the QRS, and the T, but I have to use electro speak when I do this. I have to talk about electrical terminology when I do this. I cannot use the words contraction and relaxation. Let me say that to you again. You can't say contraction or relaxation when you're looking at an ECG. Those are not allowed because those are muscular terms telling me what the muscle cells are do, doing, not electrical terms. So I have to describe what occurs at the waveforms in electrical terms. So the P wave. I'll give you a moment. Look at your textbook. What does the P wave represent? Atrial depolarization. That's the way you have to say it, typically on a test or a quiz. The P wave is atrial depolarization. What's the QRS waveform? 
the big one, ventricular depolarization. And what's the T wave? Ventricular repolarization. So notice the terms that I used here. These are action potential. Electrochemical words, aren't they? The P wave is when the atria depolarize. The QRS wave is when the ventricles depolarize. And the T wave is when the ventricles repolarize. Now, first, let me ask you the obvious question. I'll put a question mark right here. Let me ask you the obvious question. What electrical event is missing here? What electrical event is not present that you think should be? And I'll wait because I'm not at all bothered by the uncomfortable silence. What event is missing? I've got depolarization of the ventricles, repolarization of the ventricles, depolarization of the atria, and where's repolarization? So we don't usually see atrial repolarization. We don't see atrial repolarization. That's the answer to our question. Which one don't you see? Atrial repolarization. Why not? Well, two reasons. One, it tends to be much smaller. And two, it generally happens right here in the middle of the QRS somewhere. So even if it was to make a deflection we would see, it would be obliterated by this QRS because thinking of heart diagrams you've looked at, don't the two ventricles have a lot more myocardium than the two atria? Much more tissue, many more cardiac muscle cells. So they make great big deflections here. The QRS is typically the tallest one. Sometimes in some people, the T wave looks a little bit taller. But that's the first reason. We don't see the, the repolarization of the atria because it happens in the middle of the QRS. And the other reason is a little more practical in nature. Give me just a moment to find a little blank spot here. This, this uh, ECG that I drew right here, the beautiful one that's in your textbook, is that the way they look in real life all the time? No, they're not always that clean, are they? Sometimes they're a little messy, these ECGs. Sometimes you get a bunch of electrical noise in them. So here's my P, and then here's my QRS, and then here's the T, and then I've got another one starting here, P, Q, R, S, T. Like that. Sometimes they get looking a little messy, don't they? As an artifact of the equipment you have. Maybe you've noticed this, and some of you are out in the field, maybe you've seen this. If we want to get a really good, clean ECG off of a person, don't we often put them in what's known as an electrically quiet room? The lights are down, machinery is insulated other than my ECG recorder. I've got uh, less electrical interference. In my typical A&P lab, there's a lot of electrical noise and the thing gets looking a little messy. My point is this, even if I saw that repolarization wave, it'd be almost indistinguishable from electrical noise. So what I always tell people, let's go down the road, 10 years or so, you're a working professional, 
and you've just run a nice ECG on somebody and you think you see a waveform that's the atria repolarizing. So you quick hop on the phone and you call me up and you say, hey, look, Mr. Professor, I just found the repolarization of the atria on my patient's ECG. Well, there's two things I'm going to think. First, I'm going to think you're just wrong and you're looking at a little blip. Your patient just hiccuped or something. They're wearing a watch with a battery in it and that threw it off. You're just wrong. Second thing I'm going to think is even if you do see it, wouldn't that tell you that the timing of these things is off? Your QRS waveform is not happening in the right place because you're seeing a blip that you normally wouldn't see. So your patient needs more help. You don't need to be talking to me. You need to be take care of your, taking care of your patient. And you know what else I'll think? You've just created a HIPAA violation, Health Information Privacy Act. You're not supposed to tell me about somebody else's ECG. So don't even call me with that, people. I don't even want to hear that. First, I won't believe it. Second, your patient has larger problems. And then guess what? You just violated HIPAA, so you're probably going to get fired anyway. So don't, don't be calling me up to tell me that. But we can tell a lot of things about a person from their ECG and how it looks. I encourage you to look at the various ECGs you might see in your textbook, even look some up somewhere to see some beautiful ECGs. The size, the timing, the placement of these waves can tell us a lot about what's going on with a person's heart without us even having to do anything to the person. Again, I don't have to cut them up. I don't have to poke them with anything. All I have to do is put some leads on them. One of the more common things that you might see, a premature ventricular contraction, a PVC. If I just go to a little blank spot here, so if I was to see an ECG, and sorry, I'm just freehanding this, so I'll do the best I can. So here's my P wave. And then right away, I start into that QRS. And it's a little wide, maybe a little shallow. And then there's my T wave, like that. So this is not normal because the QRS waveform is skewed this way. PVC, premature ventricular contraction. The ventricles are contracting too early. The timing is a little bit off. This can be very serious if I start to see these over and over and over again in someone. Now, I want to be clear here. If this was your ECG, and you just had one PVC like that, and then here's your next one, and it looks, you know, more normal, and then your next one looks more normal still. I'm sorry, my art's not that good, but okay. You have a PVC, just sort of an isolated one all by itself. In reality, nobody really cares about that too much. What I don't want to see in your ECG train here is a PVC here, followed by a PVC here, followed by a PVC, multiple PVCs in a row. PVC, followed by a PVC, followed by a PVC like that. When I start to see multiple PVCs in a row, people worry about what? Fibrillation following that. This is a big cardinal sign that the heart might be going into fibrillation. The timing is off of these action potentials in the myocardium. Look in your textbook. You probably have this right near where you are right now, maybe in the next page. Look at an ECG that's fibrillation. It's going to look something like this, a squiggly line. This is myocardium that's in fibrillation. It's not a flat line. 
A flat line means your heart's doing nothing at all. A fibrillating heart, the cells are contracting, but here's your definition. Fibrillation is when cardiac muscle cells are contracting independently of one another. If you saw a heart that was in fibrillation, it would just be quivering. Here, this, I'll draw a little Valentine-like heart right here. You know, your heart does not look like a Valentine, but a fibrillating heart just quivers in your thoracic cavity. It's just shaking. It's not pumping. This heart would not be pumping any blood. This is a problem, right? Your heart's in fibrillation. It's not pumping. So the myocardium, those cells are contracting, just not in sync, not in a normal rhythm. This is a type of arrhythmia of the heart. What can drive it into arrhythmia? All sorts of different electrical events. One that's been in the news of late. People have talked about, I've even had a few people ask me about commotio cordis. Maybe you've heard about that. Suspected cause of cardiac arrest. Just this year, football player right on the field. You saw it, right? An impact that happens to somebody maybe right about, let me change colors here, right about in here somewhere. An impact to the heart right at usually the leading edge of the T wave. If strong enough, can cause a heart to come out of rhythm, to go into fibrillation. An impact to the thoracic wall, hard enough, might do this. Perhaps you've seen, in some instances, in a cardiac emergency, where a medical professional thumps on a person's chest. I don't mean compressions like CPR. I mean they pound on a person's chest when there is no equipment available. They're trying to do something to save this person in a cardiac emergency. What happens is we can sometimes stop or start the heart through a physical impact if it happens at exactly the right moment in the ECG. It comes from Latin, commotion around the heart is what this means. And people have died from this being impacted in their thorax. Typically somebody in contact sports and typically somebody younger. Usually we're talking about adolescence. The rib cage has not hardened completely. But even in younger adults, if an impact is hard enough, we can actually cause a bunch of ion channels to suddenly fly open on the surface of the myocardium. The most likely culprit suspected is some of those calcium channels. If you think about what you may have learned in your first semester class about the conduction of an action potential in skeletal muscles, do you remember how some of those voltage-gated calcium ion channels had little protein links on them, and some of the calcium channels on the surface of the heart are mechanically sensitive, meaning if you hit them, move them enough, they will fly open. So this impact to the thoracic wall, at just the right moment, throwing open a bunch of probably calcium channels is enough to throw the heart into arrhythmia. In this case, fibrillation, which could lead to stopping altogether. So a question for you. If your heart or somebody else's heart is in fibrillation, if the ECG 
looks like this one right here. So that heart is not pumping. What do we do? We use a defibrillator. If we suspect the heart is in fibrillation, we use a defibrillator. An external electric device which sends a giant voltage wave through the thorax to the myocardium. A giant voltage wave through the thorax to the myocardium. So if my heart was in fibrillation right now, if you sent a big voltage pulse through my body wall onto the myocardium, what would happen to all those voltage-gated sodium, calcium, and potassium channels. If I hit my heart with a big voltage wave all at once, they would all open at the same time. I want you to think about it. Wouldn't they? So yes, I'm talking about the thing, very dramatic on the TV shows, right? The paddles, you know, charging, clear, boom, like that sending a large voltage wave through the thoracic wall to the myocardium, causing all of the voltage-gated channels, ion channels, to suddenly fly open. All the myocardium would contract at once. I'm going to say that again. All the myocardium would contract at once. And then what do we hope will happen? The SA node will come in and everybody else must follow, getting us back into a normal sinoatrial rhythm or sinus rhythm, people say. So a defibrillator is just a great big door opener. It just opens up all those voltage-gated ion channels at once. Everybody contracts at the same moment and we hope that the SA node picks up its normal pace. Does it always work? No. Does it work sometimes? Yes. Is it better than trying nothing at all? Certainly better than trying nothing at all. Trying nothing at all won't do anything. And you've seen we are all have these AEDs around now. An automated or automatic electric defibrillator or an automatic emergency defibrillator. Big strap you put around a person's thorax and then a computer first runs a quick ECG. If it detects fibrillation, then it will defibrillate the heart in an attempt to return normal SA rhythm. 